Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. My name is Ju Mei Ren. I'm from the Statistics Department at Stanford University. Today I'm going to present knockoffs with site information. This is joint work with my advisor, Emmanuel Candice. The general problem that we consider is the variable selection problem. Suppose we're given potentially many explanatory variables and the response y. Our goal is to detect the important variables with regard to the response. And meanwhile, we want to control the proportion of the false discoveries. Examples of such variable selection problems include the GWAS and the MRI. So for example, in GWAS, the scientist wants to discover genetic variants that are associated with a certain phenotypes. And in MRI, the neurologists probably want to find regions of interest that are associated with certain diseases. Here, concretely, we consider a slightly different version of the variable selection problem. Um, so additionally, uh, apart from everything we have discussed in the previous slide, we additionally have the site information associated with the variables. So here our goal would be to detect the important variables with regard to the response with the help of the site information, and meanwhile control the proportion of the false discoveries conditional on the site information. So recall the GWAS example, the site information in this example can be the prior knowledge of the genetic variants. And in the MRI example, the site information can be the location of the regions of interest. Formally, we we'll define a variable xj to be null if it is independent of the response conditional on all the other covariates. The R be the number of discoveries, V the number of false discoveries. We consider the error criterion the false discovery rate defined to be the expectation of the ratio of the number of false discoveries to the number of discoveries. So our goal would be to detect as many non-null variables as possible while controlling the FDR below desired level alpha. For example, alpha can be 0.1. To start, let me give a brief introduction to the knockoffs framework. It is a variable selection procedure that our procedure is going to be based on. Let's first recall the scientific paradigm. Suppose a sci scientist has a response in mind. She goes out, does experiments, collects data, and she wants to find out which uh, variables are significantly associated with the response. So suppose she has an IID observations. She would apply a black box algorithm to the data set, and the, the algorithm gives her a selection set. But the problem is that not every black box algorithm comes with error control guarantee. So the knockoffs framework proposed by Barbara et al. in 2015 and Candace et al. in 2018 is a wrapper around these black box algorithms. And it produces a selection set with FDR control at the desired level. So with this knockoffs framework, the new scientific paradigm would be given the observations, the scientist applies the black box algorithm and the knockoff wrapper, and she gets a selection set with the nice FDR control. So the idea of the knockoff is like this. It constructs a knockoff copy XJ tilde for each variable XJ, and it serves as a control. And it uses the black box algorithm to assess the effect of XJ on Y and the effect of XJ tilde on Y simultaneously. And then it compares the effects. So as illust illustrated by this plot, uh, the red dots and the dark blue dots are the original variables, while the shallow blue dots are the knockout variables. So from a practitioner's point of view, she cannot distinguish the dark, um, dark, one, dark blue ones from the red ones because she does not know the ground truth, but she has access to the shallow, the shallow blue ones. By construction, the shallow blue ones should behave similarly to the dark blue ones. So the idea of the knockoffs is that uh, you can use the behavior of the shallow blue dots to estimate the behavior of the sharp dark dots. So based on the knockoffs framework, we proposed the adaptive knockoffs. It is a variable selection procedure that uses the side information. It controls the finite sample FDR conditional on the side information. And it shows a st uh, improvement in statistical power in both simulations and in real applications. 
So now we are going to describe the procedure. For both the knockoff procedure and the adaptive knockoff procedure, the input is uh, the data matrix X and the response vector Y. The first step is to construct the knockoff copy X tilde for the origin X. So the construction of knockoffs is already a well-studied problem. Uh, let's just assume it can be done efficiently here. And then we apply our favorite black box algorithm A to the augmented data set X, X tilde, Y to generate the future importance score ZJ and ZJ tilde for each XJ and XJ tilde. And finally, we construct a future importance statistic for each J called WJ. WJ is defined to be the difference between ZJ and ZJ tilde. So by such definition, a large positive value of WJ indicates that feature J has a larger probability of being non-null. So this W is going to play a key role in the following steps. Um, and it has the nice property proved by Condes et al. in 2018 that conditional on the absolute value of W, the signs of the null WJs or I the coin flips. So, Having computed this W, um, both knockoffs and adaptive knockoffs would sequentially examine the hypothesis according to an ordering. But the difference is that the ordering of the knockoffs is determined only by the W, while the ordering of the adaptive knockoffs is determined by both W and U. So this ordering is very important in the knockoffs framework. For the adaptive knockoffs procedure, at the beginning of this procedure, we consider all the hypotheses to be unexamined, and it, then it proceeds to uh, examine them sequentially. So at step K, it first computes a estimated FDP among the unexamined hypotheses, which is essentially the number of uh, features with negative WJs over the number of features with positive WJs. For example, in this plot, uh, it is just the number of blue boss uh, over the number of red boss in the gray box with some modification. So if this estimated FTP is below uh, a desired level, we stop the procedure and select the remaining unexamined hypothesis with a positive WJ. For example, in this plot, it is the red boss in the gray box. Otherwise, it proceeds and uses a filter phi k plus one to determine the next hypothesis to be examined. So by such construction, if we're able to put more red balls towards the end of the ordering, we can stop the procedure earlier and make more discoveries. So why don't we just put all of the red balls towards the end of the ordering? We can't do that because uh, in order to have FDR control, there should be some requirements uh, for the filter. So the requirement is that at step k, the future k, phi k plus one should be measurable with regard to the sigma field generated by the available information. Here, the available information includes the magnitudes of all WJs, the signs of the WJs that have been examined, the side information, the signs of the non-null WJs, the number of positives and negative null WJs in the unexamined hypothesis. So we show in our paper that if the conditions for the vanilla knockoffs are satisfied and the filter phi k plus one is measurable with regard to the corresponding sigma field, uh, our adaptive knockoffs controls the FDR at the desired level uh, conditional on U. So having stated this requirement for the FDR control, we here uh, present a simple example of how to construct such a filter. So suppose, in the, as in this plot, we're at step k, we want to select from the gray boss, uh, the one with the highest probability of being a blue ball, because we want to keep, all of, oh, keep the red balls towards the end of the ordering. So we can actually do this by, model, by modeling the probability of having a negative WJ, which is having a blue ball in this plot. So this can be done by um, a logistic model, and we can fit the model using the available data. So the available data is the uh, examined hypothesis. And then we can use the fitted model to estimate uh, the probability of having a blue ball in the unexamined hypothesis and pick the one with the highest probability of having a negative WJ. So 
the previous example uses uh, the GLM. Of course, we can use other models like GAM, RAN first, and even neural networks. Uh, I have to stress that the correctness of the model does not affect the FDR control as long as the measurability condition is satisfied, uh, but it may affect the power if the model cannot effectively use, uh, it cannot effectively use the site information. But on the other hand, if it can effectively use the site information, there will be a great power boost. So we show in our numerical simulation, oh, okay, we have uh, a quite a few uh, choices for the future in our papers. Um, so we also show in our numerical simulation that our adapt adaptive knockout procedure outperforms the other competitors. And then we also apply our procedure to a real data, uh, the WTCCC Crohn's disease data set. Uh, we wanted to discover which genetic variants are significant with regard to Crohn's disease among the British population. Uh, the side information we use is uh, the summary statistics reported by previous GUAs in Crohn's disease among other populations. So the summary statistics uh, are p-values or z-values from GUAs in East Asia, Iran, Belgium, Germany, and the U.S. Um, so our procedure discovers more uh, number of SNPs uh, than other competing methods. So it, it uh, illustrates the advantage of utilizing site information. This concludes my talk, and here are a few references. Um, finally, our paper is available online, so interested audience can go to this website and check out our paper. I'm also happy to answer questions in the discussion session. Thank you so much for your attention.